Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back again to Canon Fodder TV. Friday morning, actually midday over here. Yeah, an hour later than uh, scheduled, but um, I thought we'll kind of review the sad news which broke yesterday, the passing of the greatest footballer who ever played the sport of football, not soccer, uh, Pele. Uh, review, I saw a video um, that was broadcast like 19 years ago, you know, his life story, and that's some a few things that came to mind. But um, we're going to be reviewing that, as well as some other bits and pieces. We've got a prediction uh, coming from an uh, ex... I think, did he play for Chelsea? He played for Celtic, anyway, at least. But we're going to get into this new segment on the other side of this music intro. Yes, indeedy. Welcome back again to Canon Fodder TV, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Yes, Friday lunchtime, just uh, four minutes after the hour of midday UK time or GMT. Uh, as always, well, as always of late, I've been saying do not subscribe to the channel. Just hit the like button. It says it somewhere down here. Yeah, just, just click the like button. For me, that means... A whole lot more than subscribing to the channel and we always welcome our reoccurring our re returning um small i don't know a small group of, of our subscribers and followers but do you know what do me a favor and just click the like button not so much subscribe also coming to the live chat let me know your thoughts about pele also related was pele the greatest footballer for me he was messi's only won one world cup hasn't he pele won one, two, three. Yeah. Uh, and anything else you want to talk about, uh, let me know. Co again, come to the live chat. Uh, there has been one comment from Colin. Colin, good morning to you. I did see the comment that you put in the Canon for you to your WhatsApp group. Yeah, I never saw Pelly play live. I didn't, So, but you did. You know, um, was it New York Cosmos? Cosmos? New York Cosmos? Yeah, out in the States. But um, yeah, for some reason, it hasn't shown your comment here on the screen there. But anyway, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So... Um, the first new segment uh, of the morning is coming from Chris Sutton. This is not Chris Sutton. I just thought, let me just put up the, uh, the, the table as it stands. Now, Chris Sutton has boldly tipped Arsenal to lose only their second league game of the season and the final Premier League prediction of 2022. Sutton believes that history could repeat itself to BBC Sport. If Arsenal go to Brighton, Hove Albion and win then that would be a sign that they can go all the way and win a title. It was a massive for the Gunners that Eddie and Ketia scored in their uh, win over West Ham, and he took his goal tally uh, well too. Uh, but this is a big test of their resolve and the sort of game where they will miss the injured Gabriel Jesus. Well, they've been saying that for the longest time, haven't they, to be honest? Brighton knocked out Arsenal of the Carabao Cup earlier in the season, but they actually have a decent record against them in the Premier League in recent years. Uh, beat them at the Emirates Stadium in April yeah, this year. Uh, I'm going for another seagull success here, although the way they play means Arsenal will have uh, chances. Maybe 2-1. Arsenal have dropped points just uh, twice in the Premier League so far. Suffered a 3-1 uh, win, uh, uh, sorry, loss against Manchester United and a 1-1 draw against Southampton. Sutton also tips City, Man City, to thrash Everton 5 now. and if his predictions come true, Pep Guardiola's team uh, will be just two points ahead of the Gunners come the turn of the year. In more positive news, Arsenal fans, the former striker also believes Tottenham will fail to beat Aston Villa's side, rejuvenated under former Gunners boss Unai Emery. He added, I just don't know what to expect from Tottenham. For a team that is fourth in the table, they're extremely inconsistent and very unconvincing at times. And, um, yeah, come in with your predictions. Do you, you know, what, what are you going to be, be predicting for the game tomorrow? 31st, last game of, actually, for Arsenal at least, in the, this side of 2022. Let me know your, your predictions for that. I haven't given my prediction. I probably might give prediction maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll probably do a prediction, but not, not today. <laughs> not today. Uh, what else do we have? We have here uh, this youngster just, just doing the business in France, man. Yes, you recognize him from Balogun? You recognize him, don't you? Uh, Balogun bangling the goals. As uh, we fret over our attack uh, or lack of depth 
at center forward, just across English Channel, and then down a little bit, and then, so fly, flying past it, get it, yeah. uh, over a little bit, and Arsenal player is banging in them in League One. Florian Balogun is currently on loan at Reims, and yesterday scored, sorry, fly, <laughs> uh, scored twice in their 3-1 win over Reims, and uh, that takes his tally now to 10 goals. 10 goals, oh my goodness, so far this season. Put him in a pretty decent company near the top of the goal scoring charts with three assists to his name. That means Balogun has been involved in 13 of Rem's 19 goals in the league this season. And to have such an impact at mid table side, where chance creation is not as prolific as it would be at other clubs, is very impressive return for a player who took uh, himself out uh, of his comfort zone uh, this season. I'll tell you what, uh, would I recall him back? No, I wouldn't. Let the youngster fulfill his, his dream. A season-long loan deal out at Rams. And remember, he was out of the borough, wasn't he, as well, previous to that. But uh, we don't need to recall back a Balogun. No, we don't. Let him have his full season out there in France and uh, see what happens after that. Yeah, that's right. I said it. I said it. Next new segment, a bit of a tinge of um, transfer to it. Jao Felix. Jao Felix. The yeah, coach uh, confirms uh, Chelsea and Arsenal will target um, will stay at Atletico Madrid. Diego Simeone says uh, Jao Felix transfer future does not depend on him amid rumours of Chelsea and uh, Arsenal chasing the Atletico Madrid striker. A deal to take the Portuguese player on loan for eight million uh, fee plus his wages in full uh, is said to have a, a, a number of teams of signing Felix in January. After the report riff uh, with Simeone, Ooh. however, the 23-year-old showed his worth on Thursday with a fine display against Elk uh, after Simeone responded to rumours over Felix's uh, future. I think um, Jao Felix will not be coming to Arsenal. Um, I was thinking of doing like a short video, um, you know, transfer news video. I might do that on the other side of 2022, 2023. But Jao Felix leaving um, Simeone, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. He'll be staying there. Maybe just to spite the player, who knows? But Jao Felix, for now, isn't shifting anywhere. He's not going anywhere. Um, and I think um, that is that, as they say. Uh, look at this. Was this uh, okay? Not so right. Um, yeah, so I believe um, these are all the new segments coming running on Canon 40 TV on this Friday morning show where we found out yesterday that you're going live. Yeah, going live yesterday evening to find out Pele um, had passed away, aged 82. Now, I put out a video, I didn't put out a video, but um, I shared a video. Um, early this morning on our Canon 40 TV WhatsApp group. Uh, just short of um, 45 minutes. A, a really insightful video. I'm sure there'll be a lots of videos, you know, going around, being circulated. But I thought, for me at least, this just kind of showed me, not the not the backdrop, but the, at the forefront of Pele. Growing up in Sao Paulo, very, very poor was racism, violence, you know, uh, uh, you know, poverty, uh, a lot of money swirling around. I didn't realize actually he been, he had been made bankrupt uh, at least twice. Um, you know, you know, just people that he thought well, literally had his best interests at heart. Uh, no, no, so bankrupt twice, and actually he retired in 1977. Only, no, not to what, 1975, only to, to be called to come back and play football for New York Cosmos um, because he had some some serious money that he had to pay. Uh, but yes, yes, on air, um, Pele, passed away, you know, age 82. And what I realized when I was watching this documentary is that the, even though he says in this documentary that they he was playing in the suits with some children and there was some boy who said, Pele, Pele. He said, he, he, he said what? But no, not Pele. My, my name, oh my goodness. It was a really, really, really good uh, documentary. <coughs> Um, but yeah, he himself said, yeah, I'm not sure why they, 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 they said Pele. Now, Pele in Spanish means I fought, you know, as in, you know, fight, fought, fighting. It means I fought. So I don't know, maybe in a roundabout way, because he did say that he was fighting with the boy 
who say, you know, <laughs> he said, no, my name is Edison. My name's Edson. It's not Pele. And the boy kept saying Pele. And after that, all the children were kept. It, it, it became his nickname, Pele. But Pele in Spanish means fight or fought. I fought. Maybe I fought that with these, these children in the street there. But um, yeah, it's, it, it's um, I, I don't know. I don't know. My sister, was it last week? Actually, two weeks ago. So, but Alex, you know what? At mum's house, you know, I was just trying to clear some bits and pieces and I came across your hat. I think of my, what hat? This hat, 20 years ago, 20 years ago. And my sister just pulled, put it out like two weeks ago. So I thought, you know, I, I had uh, the Brazilian um, kit, but it was a blue and white one that was given to me uh, as a present when I was working in a, in a store many, many years ago. And they also brought this for me as well. But um, yeah, five stars still. They've got some work to do to get the six star. But uh, yeah, yeah. So um, so that that is it. That's the new segment that's coming on this uh, Friday Friday lunchtime show on Canon for the TV. I'm gonna go on our Twitter feed and see if there's been any comments uh, there. I think there was was there one? No, it was the Gunners Pub. Una, good afternoon to you. Hope you're keeping well. Uh, the Gunners Pub. She just retweeted out that you know we're live, and also about we're talking about something else about if probably those of you who know North London, uh, Chapel Market, Angel, that area there where I used to walk through Sunday lunch times with my mum, my brother, and my sisters after church. So just just about that, and I believe now I could probably go into yeah. Let me go in and see where. Do we stand now with the the polling question? And the polling question, which I think we'll probably read out for the last time, I think today, about Ivan Tony, Mr. IT. Would Ivan Tony fit Arsenal's playing style? Choose only one. Choose one, yes or no. Straight yes or no. We have now received 912 votes, five comments. Why is it five comments? I should have responded to all those comments there. 24 likes. And I think the numbers have, have just stayed and stayed the same. So 40% of the votes say that Ivan Tony would not fit in Arsenal's style. And 60% of the votes say actually he would fit in Arsenal's playing style. I'm still thinking about it. I'm still thinking about it. All right. Uh, what else can I do? Okay. Some of tweets, but not, 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 not. Uh... Okay. Okay. Which leads me to say I can now go into the live chat. I can go into the live chat. He thinks, yeah, I can go to a live chat. I'm going to go in the live chat. The first up is Isaac, my running mate. Not my running mate. My mate, my brother, brother Isaac. Good afternoon to you. He says, uh, greetings, brother. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Uh, is that, I can't even see the names. Why is the screen so small? Uh, Tamuka says, uh, hats off to Balagal smashing it. Yeah. Pff, my goodness. Oh, well, anyway, anyway, I did read out his stats there. Along with uh, Patino doing so well in their low moves. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a question for you. Would you would you recall Charlie, Charlie Patino? I know um, there's Arsenal. From what I read of late, they're wanting him to sign a contract extension. Uh, he's out of Blackpool, isn't he? Would you recall him? Again, we've got so many youngsters. I read out the the, the list of players, young players from the academy who could probably come in. I'm not saying throw them into the Premier League. You know, again. Transition them in. Cup games, the odd games, some minutes, and maybe after that, give them some minutes towards in in the Premier League. But Arteta's not going to do that because where do we sit? We sit on top of the Premier League table. And it would be a massive risk. But everything is a risk. But a risk to Arteta if he were to play some of the youngsters and it were to backfire. But, yeah, but Balogun at least, and Charlie Patino, would you recall them back? Balogun, I wouldn't recall back. Let him have a full season out there in France. He's doing really, really good. Uh, Charlie Patino, is, he's idolised now, isn't he? Oh, my goodness. Uh, Isaac uh, Kamavinga, what's going on, mister? 
<laughs> Ashley D, good morning to you. Says we have Gunas. Uh, we should do well against Brighton tomorrow. I really fancy our chances. I give my prediction tomorrow. Not now. Not now. Uh, feeling good, Alex. I see a 2-0 to Arsenal coming uh, with a, a during a game transfer announcement. Maybe. We can live in hope, can't we? We can live in hope. What about Kamavinga? Uh, just uh, playing on your name. Maybe a distant uh, relative you can uh, influence. <laughs> Colin, I might be tracing my roots to France soon. <laughs> Uh, why in the California TV uh, world has uh, that like button not been smashed? Chatty chatty. Do you know what, Colin? I, I I tried to explain to my brother, you know, a couple of years ago that it's 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 a challenge. It's a challenge because it's not only about pressing the go live button. You know, I've got to do my research. You know, when I do the easy talk, I've got to remember, Alex. Do not try not to give your opinion because you're here to facilitate a discussion about whatever the topics are. You know, and so sometimes I say, you know, guys, can you subscribe? I don't say that anymore. At the top of the show, I say, I would like you to subscribe. And that is it. I've got so many things I need to think about when I'm doing a show, going live and direct from Canon Foy TV Studios. Canon Foy TV Studios is the kitchen. Anyway, Posh, good morning to you, says Frankie de Jong. Mm, for our necessities now, Frankie de Jong? Oh, I don't... I don't I, no, 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 no. Where, where is he now? Where's Frankie de Jong now? Uh, I can always get him... Let's see, thank you. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Barcelona, nah. And you know what as well, Posh, I've, I said yesterday about Vladovic, Dusan Vladovic. Again, the rumours report saying that, you know, he wants to come and actually sign for Arsenal. I don't want players coming to Arsenal, in inverted commas, mercenaries. They're only coming here to get a payday and then they'll be off. Or thinking, oh, you know what, this club is at the top of the league. Top league means Champions League football. I want players who want to come and play for Arsenal, irrespective of our condition or where we are. Vladovic, sorry, stay where you are, man. Stay where you are. No. You had the choice to come, January, and you chose the old lady over us, the Gunners. So stay where you are. And life is not so great for him at Juventus. Stay where you are. We don't want you. I don't want you anyway at Arsenal. Sorry. <laughs> the studio has no bottles left over there, Alex. I'll I tell you what, Colin, you know what I did? I told my wife, I removed the bottles out of, <laughs> out of the camera view. And actually, this is a bottle here. It's a present from one of my colleagues at the school I work in. But it's, it's incarcerated. It's inside its, its bag. So you can't see it there. But I thought, you know what? You know, make sure I move all the bottles out of the way, man. All the bottles, only one bottle. <laughs> Brian, Brian, good morning to you. As says, morning fans of Arsenal transfer all targets. Well, we can't go for all the players. Again, a ballpark figure for us, if we were to sign two players in a January transfer window, I'll be happy with that. And even more so if they were players where we need the most. Central defensive midfielder, uh, always have a uh, yeah, a winger. We don't need a winger, striker, not a backup striker, an additional striker, minimum two players in the January transfer window. Yeah. Ben, good morning to you. Says, uh, persuaded to pay a different amount of money for Ben White. We paid 50 million pounds for White, and he hasn't done anything at the moment. I thought he had a, a good game against West Ham. I thought, in my mind, he was a close second of you know, man of the match. I thought he's done okay. I mean, I was one of the biggest critics. Why did we have to spend £50 million on Ben White when we had uh, William Saliba? 
50 million pounds could have saved that money and used it to you know utilize and you know buy a different player but he's with us i thought he he how can i say this he's he's okay he's all right the understanding that he's built up with Bukai Saka on the right hand side, the overlaps, the, the dummy plays and the little triangular plays there, it's it's working okay. Although I thought Bukai Saka again sometimes slows down the play. You know, he receives the ball, he's like he's thinking, well, he's he's trying to drag in the, the player, suck them in, slows down the play, he then he releases the ball, and then he does like a, a run. I was thinking, yeah, but he, he scored. He scored, didn't he? But Ben White, I think he's played okay. I think he's played all right. I can't say he's done nothing. Uh, Patino looks uh, mature to come back. Even now, he could do bits for us. <coughs> Colin says uh, Zaha impacts at the team now uh, and loves Arsenal. Tillemans, a position uh, we need, and wants Arsenal. Mudrick doing everything to get <laughs> to the carpet. We do not need flippy floppy Radovich types. No, we don't. We don't. Uh, that's a good analyst, actually. You know, really, really good in insider uh, or, or one sentence there. Yeah, a player who can improve the team now. But again, it does he fit the profile? Does he fit the profile? You know, Arteta wants. I don't know. Uh, Tillemans has made it very plainly clear, you know, before the summer that he wants out, he wants Arsenal. Uh, Radovic, no, thank you. Uh, there's the most important sign of William Saliba. Sorry to disappoint the the the, the Saka of starting early people, but Saliba is the most important. Uh, we did a show a few weeks ago, um, and people highlighted the importance of Thomas Party and how he got injured last season, and that was the main factor why we didn't sustain that charge and secure top four. I can't just pin it on one player. Do you remember after the internationals when we lost three on the bounce? All the games in, in one particular season matters in the Premier League. All the games, how we play, how we don't play, how we disappoint ourselves, how we go to a, a particular club away from the Emirates and we think the game is already done. Everything matters. So I can't just say, oh, because it was Thomas Party, he got injured, and that's why we didn't secure, you know, top four. No, there's not one singular, singular incident. Everything, all the small incidents, the actions matters, and it comes and make up the all of this this one image here. We didn't get, we didn't secure top four. So just to say that Thomas Party's injury was the major factor why we didn't get top four, I think is really unfair. And by the way, I'm just showing this again. My sister found my cat that some, well, my ex-colleague bought for me for, as a birthday present 20 odd years ago. That, this, and the Brazilian blue jersey, not not the yellow, the blue one, blue and white one. I was telling my wife last night that I tried to iron it and the iron was hot and I, 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 I yeah, I had to throw it away. But um, anyway. Uh, Arsenal uh, got this Saturday, but uh, Brighton hold out him uh, away. <coughs> yes, yes, uh, they do. Zaha can play across the front, a centre striker, and back up. Uh, not not many defenders would love to see strikers or wingers, you know, bearing down on them. Even more so, a tricky Wilfred Zaha. Yeah, age twenty nine. Yeah, does he fit the profile? The age profile. Uh, that Mikko Arteta is wanting these days. But he's played in the Premier League how many seasons now? And he's, he's prophesied that he, you know, he's he's an Arsenal fan through and through. Anyway, uh, let's have a look here. Any other comments? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay, righty. Okay, any other comments um, you would like to make, questions or observations apart from there are no bottles? You can't see any bottles there. I made sure that you can't see any bottles there. Colin. <laughs> Wave yourself, Colin. Um, yeah, only I could probably say add on top of that, you know, before we go back into the live chat for the last time. 
again, just, you know, the story, you know, I don't, I'm not going to bore each and every one of you again, how my brother and I actually met. Yes, we met Pele in the summer of 1981, uh, coming, driving back in his limousine, black limousine coming back from the High BM Stadium. Um, yeah, wonderful. I do need to try and dig out my autograph. I know my brother said that he got his, but I can't find, can't find mine. So I need to have a proper look and find um, his autograph. But uh, for me, the greatest, I repeat, the greatest ever to have played football. The greatest. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, go back in the live chat. When you think about it, uh, what's our biggest uh, change from last season? Uh, to this, Zincheng, Zin, 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 Zin Bro Zinbroko, and how he played. This is definitely Saliba, massive change. Zin, Zinbroko, <laughs> Zinbroko. <laughs> Oh dear, Colin. <laughs> uh, I don't like I don't like to single out players, but I, I, I would say if you look at the back three or the back four, whether it's you know it's a, a Tierney, uh, and you've got uh, uh, listen the defense. I would always look at Gabriel as possibly the player who I worried about. You know, I I have kittens. When he's on the ball, I'm thinking, oh, man, what are you going to do? And he still has a tendency to foul players. You know, and there's no need to foul the player. You know, you're on the halfway line, the ball's lumped up or coming to the player. Drop off. Drop off. You've got enough speed in your legs. You don't need to keep fouling the player. But Gabriel does worry me sometimes. Um, has William Saliba been the biggest component of how Arsenal plays? He scored a wonder goal, didn't he? But got to score goals. Defend, defend, defend. Be difficult to break down. But in the end, in order for us to win, we've still got to score goals. And it is a team effort. But I do love Willis Saliba. Is he going to sign a contract extension? If you're asking me today, Friday the 30th of uh, December 2022, uh, uh, 12.30, I would say No. I would say he won't sign a contract extension. And all this talk about, you know, Saka, we're coming close, sign a contract extension, nothing at all. Martinelli is still waiting for the pen. Still waiting to be given a pen to sign a contract. Uh, blessings, Alex. Yes, 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 yes. Anthony D. Scissors, Master Samuel, brother, what's happening? I hope you're keeping well. Uh, greeting season, yes, sync for that. Uh, Silver not only uh, shored up the, the CV, but made Ben White into a rock star on the outside back spot of his uh, addition. Yeah, yeah. I thought for a second, I thought you said that uh, his uh, addiction. His addition. <laughs> his addition. Yes, yes. It's like you want players who are not going to be just filling the spots just to fill the spot just for the sake of it. You want players to come in. And compete for that position there. And for me, William Saliba has been an instant hit. Like we always knew that he was going to be. Anyway, I don't want to go over old ground again. About the story about William Saliba being loaned out how many times. And, you know, we know that he lost a parent as well during the lockdown or during the, the pandemic. So I'm not going to go into that again. Uh... Come on, any more questions? Come on, observations. Observations, nothing about my studio. I've got to clear the studio. <coughs> All right, let me just see if there are any. Do you know what? I... Just, just, just be me a sec. What's, what's wrong with these people? What's wrong with these people? Do they not know that we are live and direct? I'm just going to send the link that to tell everyone in the Canon Foy TV group that we are live. They're half asleep. They're half asleep. Okay. Where's the link? There's the link. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. 
<laughs> Someone's just having a laugh about what I said <laughs> about meeting um, Pepe, 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 Pele. <clears throat> we are live. Okay, there we go. Voila. Euphoria, euphoria. Okay. Right, run for a few more minutes before we um, do end uh, this one uh, here. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, let's talk about the process. What do we think of Arteta now? I'm still going to hold fast. I've always said this. Some people don't like to hear this, Colin. Maybe you don't like to hear this, but this stuff about the process. If the process is to get rid of the Deadwood, he's done that. If the process was to <coughs> get rid of the likes of the former, former number 10, Mesut Ozil, then it's worked. If the process was to stamp out players who come at Arsenal with a big ego, then he's done that. But at the end of the day, as an Arsenal fan supporter of 40 odd years, I want my club to win major honours. The process has to be able to win major honours. The Premier League, the Champions League, and I'm sorry, I'm always going to hold Arsenal to high standards. The Europa League. So the process is the process. But I want to know, is the process good enough to get us to win major honours, major trophies? So I'm going to hold fast still at the end of the season. And I will give you my thoughts about the process and the season. Can we sustain and keep in top four? It remains to be seen. But we've got the components. Well, he's starting to build up the components. Are the components strong enough and durable enough to get us to the promised land? We'll have to wait and see. We have to wait and see. Bad news the LA Rams are now four and 10, or some uh, awfulness as a such. Do we think this can be one of the done? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, dearie me. Uh, I used to follow the LA Raiders back in the 80s, who are now, where are they now? I don't know, where where, where are the Raiders now? <laughs> Different part of the States. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, goodness. But has he not committed a certain amount of um, funds for Edu and Arteta? Is it is it not in the, in the realms of 100 million pounds? And so if we're going to go for a Modric, that's going to be half of the money gone. Boom, just like that. <clears throat> I'm still Arteta. Learn myself slightly shifted from Arteta on, on loan. I can never forget that. Um, why, why do you say that? Why are you still Arteta learn, Colin? Is it because of what happened <coughs> with the situation almost this time last year, the general transfer window? Why? Why are you still in that stage of Arteta Learn? <laughs> People ask me about uh, Vladovich. Don't ask me questions about Vladovich, man. I just do not want him at Arsenal. We want players who are going to fight. Fight irrespective for the badge. Not just because we're at the top of the tree in the Premier League. You know, he was all right. He, he chose to go to Juventus. You know, he could have come to Arsenal, didn't want to come to Arsenal. He wanted to go to the old lady, a.k.a. Juventus. So if the rumours are true that now he's thinking about doing a U-turn and actually want to come to Arsenal, I'm sorry, you know, your, your name is not on the door and you ain't coming in. I'm sorry. I forgot what I was looking for now. <laughs> what was I looking for? I forgot what I was going to be looking for. But yeah, Colin, let me know, why, why are you still in um, Arteta Learn? Uh, okay. All right, okay, Colin has now responded. And Colin has now said uh, the work he's done with the team and mentality took him uh, off the long list. Still some players and management questions exist and uh, in uh, game subs. But I think it's, it's getting better, isn't he? It's getting better, you know, subbing 
and making changes. Um, we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And it's just that, you know, the mistakes that he, he makes is more amplified because of where he's come from, isn't it? So, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so let me just double check uh, this. Uh, let's have a look here. Oops. Oh, what, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> the poll, again, the question. Let's double check this again. Bear me a second. Yeah, the poll, the polling question, um, again, uh, would Ivan Tony fit Arsenal's uh, style? And the numbers have remained the same, um, although we've now had uh, 913 votes, five comments and 24 likes. 40% uh, of the votes have said um, uh, Ivan Tony would not fit Arsenal's style. And of course, 60% uh, say that he would. So Arsenal needs to get onto the phone then. Okay, let me just take this off very, very quickly. Uh, going to our Twitter feed and see, see if there's been anything there of noteworthiness. If not, then we will call this quits. Okay. <clears throat> I will give my prediction for the game. Uh, it's going to be a tough, a tough uh, game against Brighton or Albion. They are still a well-drilled team, even without Mr. Potter, Graham Potter, who's left now for, for Chelsea Shores. Ambition, isn't it? Ambition. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. I will go for a 2-1 Arsenal win. <clears throat> they say that, you know, uh, w winning can be infectious. So can, lo you know, losing as well. It can become it can become a habit. So let's continue in that vein of, vein of winning. Going to Brighton over Albion. I know. Are we, going, are we going to Brighton tomorrow? I think the wife said this day she wanted to go somewhere in the, near the, um, the the sea or the beach. I might have a look at the match. No, I won't. I won't. I won't. Uh, okay, it's a couple more, and then we are done here. Oops. Talent identification, I uh, have to uh, tip my hat. Uh, he's been very good since Marty and Cedric. They were not good enough. <clears throat> and then, uh, great show, Alex, uh, slaying, or saying it as always, uh, now chatty people, slaying <laughs> like button. Yeah, like I always say, you know, I've been saying actually of late, you know, subscribing, mm, click the like button. That's what I say, click or hit or thump, or elbow, or headbutt. <laughs> Actually, don't headbutt the like button because you might end up breaking your phone or your, your mobile device or your laptop, and we don't want that now, do we? <clears throat> I don't want to get sued. You told me to headbutt my mobile phone. I spent a thousand pounds on this iPhone. You shouldn't have spent that amount of money on an iPhone. Just don't do it. Just say no. <laughs> Just say no. <clears throat> Uh, Tony, you're coming in just as we're going out, man. Um, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm finished. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I know you're late. You're late for a very important date. Uh, all I'm going to say is <clears throat> we've been speaking about actually last night going on air, and somebody said, you know, the sad news about Pele. I said, oh, oh, hang on a minute. I need to verify the news first before I can even talk about it. And our moderator actually did a wonderful job and actually say, yeah, Alex, yeah, Alex, yeah, Pele has passed away age 82. So really, really, is it sad news? <clears throat> Again, like I said last night, he, he left a, a long-lasting legacy. Now, the documentary that I posted in the WhatsApp group, it had a lot of positivity, but it had some negativity about, you know, his, his marriage, which crumbled. You know, uh, there was a, a, some some infidelity there. But I thought, you know what? I'm only going to focus on a thing that I want to focus on. Where did he come from? What he achieved and what legacy that he left. And like I said last night, when you leave this immortal coil of outs, you pretty want to leave a, a legacy 
for the good, not for the bad, for the greater good. And, you know, I've been working and supporting not only young children, young adults since 1996, which is a long time. And those, well, the adults now, from the early days, if I had a massive room and I could fit every, every child and young adult that I've, I've supported and helped and guided, I've tried to guide them, I would hope that they would say, you know what, Mr. Alex, that's what they used to call me, Mr. Alex, you helped me change my life. I would hope they would say that. So it's sad, it is, because he left now, age 82, but that's a good innings. But he's also left a long lasting legacy that I'm not going to forget. I never got to see him play live. Never. He didn't get to see him play live, but I met him personally, both my brother and myself. But I'm not going to bore you with that story again. No, I'm not. Okay. <clears throat> so just a couple more. Uh, yeah, Tony, you're late, man. You're late. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> no, man, don't do it. Don't do it. I might get sued. <laughs> Alex told me to headbutt my iPhone. No, man, no, no. Just hit the like button. That's all you need to do. Just hit the like button. <laughs> oh, dear me. Do you know what? I, I, I'm out of here. Um, again, if you do me a favor and just click the like button, that that would mean the world to us and to the Canon Foy TV uh, family. And this has been Canon for the, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world.